Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Escape and Create. So this is now episode 5 and same as usual I'm going to create another animal for you. So this one is a gorilla. Okay and I've decided to call him Gary. Gary the gorilla. Okay so obviously I'm going to show you how to um, make all the different sections of him, how to get this nice fur texture, how to make sure that he's stable and well supported on that board. So um, I hope you enjoy this this week's show and I'll see you in a bit. I'm using Serracino modelling paste with, um, well it's pre-coloured black but I've also added some white in so I've got this nice charcoal colour rather than full black. So for the body I have 115 grams, for the legs 90 grams and for the head 45 grams. So taking the um, paste for the body and just rolling it into a thick sausage and then to get the general shape I'm just going to press up and lift that side and then sort of lift that side a bit as well and what I've got now is um, a nice starting point for the body shape so I'm just smoothing that out a bit so this will be his bottom and this will be like sort of the top of his back. So I just want to get a spine in there. So I'm just pressing just off the centre with the Dresden tool and then just smoothing out each side of it. And that just starts off that spine shape. Now for his um, bottom, I'm just going to use the tool now at the bottom of that spine and just shape it. Smoothing it over with my thumb to take any of the sharpness out of it. There you go, we've got a nice bottom shape there for him. So keeping it lifted, making sure it doesn't go flat again. I'm just going to move his spine over because it seems to be slightly off to the one side. Okay. Now turning it over, I'm just going to shape in my chest. So using the dressing again. And then just curving at the bottom there. Maybe going a bit deeper and then smoothing all that out. Smoothing underneath. And shaping it a bit more just with the fingers. He'll have a nice manly chest. And then I'm just going to get some fur detail in there. So I'm using um, a Kemper tool. Don't know the exact name of it, but you'll see it's got these little wavy metal strands on the end. And that just gives you an impression of fur when pressed down using the side of the tool. So I'm just going to do that. So I don't want to go straight down in lines. I want to go slightly off and out. And what I like about this technique is it doesn't take long to do. That's the whole of the one side done already. Ok, 
Okay, so I'm not really going to give him any more shape to his body just yet. Um, I'm going to extend that fur around just under the belly. I'm going to start working on the, the legs. So his front legs need to be longer than his back legs. So I'm just going to cut about a third off of the back. Let's just move that out of the way for a moment. Cut that in half again. So those are for the back. And then this section here will be for the front. So I'm just going to cut that in half again. So just roughly in equal measures. Just rounding those off. Then I'm going to start shaping. So quite a thick sausage at the moment. So I will be using a lolly stick in a moment for these and that one stick should definitely be long enough for, for both legs. So what I want to do is start getting a bit of shape into it. So bending to create a knee. I'm just pushing it into more of a knee. And then just rolling at the bottom. And then you're creating a bit of an ankle there. And then I can push out, push and pull out to create a foot. Roll again. Now I don't want it to be too thin at the bottom, so I'm just going to roll a little bit more below the knee. Push it back up. I've got a nice chunky leg coming together there. Now where the knee is, I can just roll at the back a little bit more to give it more shape. Like that. So I'm just going to do the two legs together. Um, so it's bending first, getting that knee shape at the front. Just shaping the back of the knee again. And then rolling the foot, well, rolling the bottom of the leg to create the foot. Pressing that forward. I'm just going to check that I look the same. They're pretty much the same size. And then I'm going to start shaping some little toes into there. So using my little knife, I'm just going to cut for the big toe and then just a couple of little cuts. So one in the middle, one each side and that sort of starts off all these little toes. I want to separate those so I can get to them a little bit easier. I'm just going to increase the length of the cut a little bit more. And then each one I'm just going to roll a little. Just so they don't look so square. Because at the moment they look very, very square when they've been cut. So just handle each one carefully.
I'm just going to bring those back together. And I just want to extend that foot a little bit. So I'm just modeling it a little bit more. Bringing those little toes together. And then what I want to do is just cup them slightly. So I'm using the Dresden and I'm just going to fold them over the Dresden. And then this one, I'm just going to make it a bit wider because a gorilla's foot is more like a hand. Like that. Now if you want more detail in there, then we can put some little nails at the front. So I have just like a number three nozzle here and I can just press in at the front there and create some little toenails, which just adds a little bit more detail. And there you go. Also, I'm just gonna give him a few little wrinkles. So using the Dresden, place some little wrinkles on the feet. few creases where the toes separate there. Make sure that's curved. And now I just need to add some fur to his leg. Before I do that, we'll just have a little break and I'll see you in a moment. Hello, I am Rose and this is Rose Maysfield Caper. Okay, welcome back everyone. I've got his little, both his little feet made. So what I'm going to do now is insert a stick. So I've actually marked it. I think these are 15 centimetres long, just about. And I've marked it at the 9 centimetre mark. So these longer pieces are going to be for the front legs. So I'm just using a little bit of water from my water bush. I'm going to push them just to help them stick. And then place these in. Now, obviously, I've got a little bit of a bend, but it should, because it's thick enough, it should go right through. So it goes right down there and it'll sort of come just this part of the foot. So just before the crease. If you lose any shape, then you could, this is a good time to like extend the leg a little bit and get the shape back in there. Push the paste back up the stick. Just want to make sure it doesn't go through too much at the bottom. 
top of those are now ready to go on. So what I'm going to do is start off the fur detail. And I'm going to go back to um, the dressing tool. So what I want to do is create a fur that's not quite straight. So I'm just, can you see I'm just using the tool, pressing down, but then wiggling it around a little bit. And just give us that uh, nice chunky fur look. So from the front, you want to say, if this is the centre of the leg, I'll just mark it there. You want the fur to be coming away each side, so not straight down. And then onto the foot and then out to the side a little bit. Okay, so it's a bit time consuming, but it's a nice effect. So a nice furry gorilla leg. I'll quickly do the same for the other side. So we'll start from the centre, then I'll know that I've got to keep going down and out towards the side. It's probably a good place to start really. So this has started to go quite firm, so I'm just going to give it a really good knead. And if it gets quite firm, um, you really need to roll it hard between your hands to get the warmth in there, make it a bit softer. So a nice sausage. Making sure it's about the same thickness. And then, just rolling off the bottom a little bit, so it's just slightly tapered. I'm going to roll right in the middle of each one and taper off that centre. So this starts off a really nice shape. Okay, so rolling every section. Flattening that into the shape for the hand. So you're just pressing, and it's still quite chunky. It's not too thin, because if it was too thin, then the the fingers and the hands would look. A little bit strange, so still nice and thick. Just checking out the both similar in size and shape. So I'm just shaping them slightly so I can decide which one's left and right. And then I'm just going to cut the fingers and thumb in. So for the thumb, nice wide section there. Press it out. Just another cut to each side. To 
trying to keep them all even. Again, roll them. So roll them so they're nice and rounded. Bring them back together. Just extend those finger sections a little bit more. Just press in with the dressing tool. A bit deeper that side. Bring them back together. Shape this thumb a bit. Put a little bit of a crease in it. And I'm not going to worry about the fingernails because maybe with the thumb. Okay, so with the thumb, we just give him a little bit of a fingernail there. But I'm not going to worry about these. They're going to turn over. So, let's just turn them over using the dressing tool to help. And when they're placed down on the ground, they will be still turned over like that. Get some wrinkles in there. And then I can just use the tool to help curve that, well, move that hand forward like that just make sure it's still nice and shaped at the back there okay we're going to take another little break there and when i come back we'll finish the arms and we'll start putting them together i have three questions for you do you love all things cake Do you want to learn from some of the world's best cake artists? Do you want to be part of our growing community of over 200,000 members? Then get yourself over to cakeflix.com where we've got some amazing deals on right now. We offer a 365 day support plus the most amazing Q&A service. You can now view us on all the main streaming services. So what are you waiting for? Head over to cakeflix.com now and become part of the Cakeflix family. Woo! Okay, so welcome back. Um, I'm just going to start adding some texture into um, his arms now. So what I need, I'm going to start with this one. What I need to do is make sure that the um, texture is going in the right direction. So starting here, I'm just going to start going out to the side here. So keeping it nice and curly and not too straight. And then from this side, I want it to come down and out a little. Up until I reach his feet. Now just get down to the feet there a little bit. Well, it's not his feet, it's his hands, sorry. And then this continues in this direction at the top as well. So 
So whenever you're making um, fur texture, then it's always best to have a photo at hand so you can uh, try and create exactly the same direction of fur. And then at the back here, we just want it to all join up neatly. And we're not really going to pay much attention to the back anyway. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is insert these sticks. So just using a little bit of water. And I'm going to insert it more down this one side, so the inside of the arm. Okay, so taking the body, what I want is for this to be on the outside rather than underneath. So by creating, by feeding the stick down that side, then just that part of it will go inside the body. If there's too much stick, I can just head that out and snip a bit off. Just going to get some water on there now that I know where it's going. And sort of pressing that against the body like that. Then I can start just blending it in to the body a little bit more. So just that blending technique with the Dresden tool. Now, if there's any um, loss of texture, which there will be, you just add that bit in. So I'm just supporting it underneath as I do it. Modeling that closer to the body, making sure that stick isn't coming underneath too much, and then just blending that in. Okay, so you just need back legs. I'm going to get a sponge ready just to sort of help support him. So onto these back legs. First of all, I am going to press the paste into the stick a little bit more. And then take in some water. And placing that in. So as I push it on, I'm going to push it closer to the body. So the sponge will help support that. I think it's a little bit too low there. Blend that in. But the legs aren't quite finished anyway yet, so let's have a look at him. So I'm going to bring his leg forward a little bit, keep the one back. Okay, so I'm going to get him set on the board. Just get a bit of water, just on the bottom of his feet. 
and get him set up in place. So I've got the one hand, the one arm, slightly more forward. And then I've got his one leg, this leg back a bit. And this one a little bit more forward. And press his feet in a bit just so he starts sticking. This paste that I allowed for the head, I'm just going to use some little bits of that to blend um, the, the legs into the body a bit more. So just to fill the gaps in and make it look a little bit tidier. So this is, this is structured together well. But then we've just got these joints that need tidying up. Now what I want to do is form a bit of a sausage. That will just sit over that joint and help blend that in better. So let's just get a little bit more of that. Flatten it out. Get some water over the join and then just fix that over so it covers the whole of that join there and then I always use a little bit of water just to help me blend easier and then we're guiding that paste over onto the main body and this is where we can create a little bit of a, a curve there to shape the back leg a bit more. And then just guide that down as well so I'm just smoothing over it and are you just moving sort of a small amount of the paste so not too heavy same down here And once all that is blended in, then we can put the texture back in. I'm just going to smooth over with my finger first, just to make sure there's no lumpy bits. And then just blend that in. So let's get some extra fur in. So I'm having his fur sort of lift up from his leg across to his back section, well to his bottom section. And then gradually blend it in so it matches down here as well. And that looks a lot neater now that I've finished that off. So I'll do the other side in a moment, but also we need to do a little bit for the top of his arms. He's got really nice chunky shoulders. So taking a bit more of that paste, again, same thing, making a sausage, flattening it, and then just sticking it over the top of his arm. It bulks that out a bit more, lifts his shoulder and secures the join.
and get that fur back in like that. Okay, so you can see a huge difference between each side by adding that little bit on. Okay, so I'll get this side finished off and then we'll have a little break and then I'll come back and show you how to do the head and finish him off. Okay, so moving on to his head. So now that I've taken a little bit of the paste off there to build up his his um, arms and legs against the body, there is now only 35 grams, which is plenty to do the head. So I'm just going to pinch a little bit off just in case I need um, little bits for detail. And I've also got a little bit of dark brown there. So well, it's like a mid-brown, and that will make his eyes. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to get this, a little bit of a thick sausage shape. And then I'm going to model down the back here. And this will be the top of his head, which is really quite high on a gorilla. So I'm thinning off the bottom a little bit because that will be the chin. Thick head, big head. So just to make sure things stay in place, I've got a cocktail stick. And I'm just going to insert that in. Get some water on the paste and sit that in place. And then here, just going to push it down towards that spine. So you've got like a, a, a point. And with a bit of water, I'll get that blended in. And just blend it in the sides a bit. And then just grab it from underneath a little bit as well. So just give him a little bit of shape here. And then just allowing for eye sockets. So I'm pressing in quite deeply. 
but then I want to smooth that out. So just over his eyes, he's got like nice heavy eyebrows. I'm just going to press deeper for the eyes to sit in. I'll just open that up a little bit with the tool. Get some water in there. I'm just going to roll them into a little bit of a sausage shape. And drop those in. Then I'm going to start shaping a little bit of a nose. So I want to um, soften this area a little bit here. Press it down a bit. And then shape around. So you've got that bridge of a nose. And it's shape a little bit more around the sides so again have a reference photo when you're doing this kind of modeling i've got one in front of me and i'll keep referring back to that as i'm doing it i'm just going to go a little bit deeper here under the eyes so it's effectively forming that bottom lid there so I can push that up a little bit. I'm going to give him a crease there. Bring that crease round. Shaping a bit more round the side of what's going to be his mouth. So flattening down this um, bridge at the same time, putting some little creases in. Right at the top of his nose. They're just gently using the tool to form that crease there make it a little bit deeper and then shaping just where the nose will be so just here curving round shaping his nostril area So you see I've not gone all the way around, I've stopped and left a gap in the middle. And in this section I'm just going to soften out a bit more. And start shaping that mouth. So I need to make him some nostrils. So starting there with the mouth, I'm just doing a bit of a curve and then I will curve in the opposite direction as I come round here to the side. So I'm not pressing in very deep here. It's just to get it started. So now I can press in a little bit more with the dress done. And then lift that middle bit. And using that tool just underneath there, I'm pressing a bit deeper and that allows a lip to form. And then I can do that over the top as well. So just pressing just above the lip 
And softening that out. And draw on some pupils. I just want to make his nose, his nostrils look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just pressing them into, so just below the actual nostril, pressing them into the mouth section. So now just above his eyes now, just bringing those eyebrow sections down a little bit to meet the eye. Just pressing them down. You can give him some expression at this point. He can be a grumpy gorilla. You can make him a little bit more happy. I quite like the idea of a serious gorilla. And now we can start adding some fur texture. So back to the tool, the Kemper tool. Just going to support him as I lift him and start pressing at the side of his face. Just bring him forward so you can see that. And then start working on the top of his head. And pressing so it goes round the back of the head. Let's just make a few extra deeper creases because I can't quite get there with that tool. So I'm just going to form in some more just to finish him off. Okay, so to give him a bit of colour, I'm just using a shadow grey. I don't want too much on the bush. So I'm going to put a little bit over his nose and mouth. Just a little touch in his head. And then quite a bit on his mid back and his bottom. So Then work that down the legs a little bit. And there you go. We have a silverback gorilla. All completed. So thank you for watching again this week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed watching me make Gary. And I hope if you have a go yourself that you'll send me some pictures. Um, so next week is episode six, which means it's the final episode in this um, theme. So it'll be the final jungle animal. At this moment, I don't know what to make. So please offer me some suggestions. Um, so also, please take a look at my website, which has got details of up and coming uh, physical classes that are due to start again in September. Um, I'm also going to be doing some workshops online too, so details of those will be on there as well. Um, also, my YouTube channel has lots of little free short video tutorials for you to watch. And you can find all of those by searching for Rose Maceville Cakecraft. So thanks again for joining me and I'll see you all next week.